There is no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. Under sin, the mind leads to death, but the Spirit's control leads to life. The same Spirit that gives life has come to set you free. Welcome everybody on the other end of the camera at all of our campuses with a big round of applause. So great to have all of you here with us. A brand new church. What a joy it is. If you've got a copy of God's Word for the next few weeks, we're going to be in Romans chapter 8. Uh, I said this last week, I'll say it again. I believe that this chapter, now this is me, okay? I'm not saying that Romans 8 is the chapter. But I'm saying for me personally, and I would say for many years of my spiritual journey, Romans 8 has been uh, just a, a, a rock bed of solid truth. I believe this with all my heart that if I only had one chapter, uh, for whatever reason, that I had no other chapter of Scripture, that you could operate, function fully in every level of your spiritual life just by obeying the truths found in Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse number 1, there's now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you believe that, say amen. amen. And because of that, we operate fully through the power of the Holy Spirit as you see in the Scripture from 1 all the way to 25. And, and it goes on to the end of the text, but especially from 1 to 25. Here's, here's the dichotomy. The dichotomy found in, in the passage is this. It's flesh or the Spirit. You're, you're going to operate into one or two categories. I want you to understand this as well. All of the Spirit of God upon salvation lives within you. You're yielding yourself to the power of the Holy Spirit, if you will, yielding yourself to that moment of baptism of the Holy Spirit, where you say, take me over, is up to you. It's up to you. you. You have to, or you're going to continue living the dichotomy of every time someone parks in your spot, you're going to want to utilize a middle appendage to show them how disappointed you are. That's the difference between the flesh and the spirit and operating therein. So as you look and read, and we'll look back into that text, I want you to look at verse number 26. Because you understand the dichotomy, you know that we're broken except for Jesus Christ shed blood, what his work on the cross, what he did for us, the power of the Holy Spirit, God living in us. Now we've got to operate therein. Here's what the scripture says in verse number 26. It's so powerful and it's so refreshing. And it says, it says the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. If that excites you, say amen. Amen. <laughs> It helps us in it. Here's what the scripture does not say. The Holy Spirit takes away your weakness. It does not say that. I believe this all my heart. Your weakness is what God's going to bring about in your life to a pursuant path of new purpose and passion for the cause of Christ. What happens is we get all phony and religious and start acting like we ain't got none. When we have weaknesses, and in doing so, the Scripture tells us in the beautiful book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse number 9, my grace is all you need, the Scripture says there. My grace is all you need. Look at this. My power works best in your weakness. My power works best. When does the power work best in your vehicle? If you got a 99 Suburban, never. Never, it never works best. But if you've got one, you know the octane of fuel, you, you're that person, you know exactly the temperature, what tires, everything. Listen, when you declare you're weak, God's power is declared strong in your life. And you're like, oh, I've got to have it all together and blah, 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 blah. That's when you get a spirit of religion instead of the Holy Spirit. And the reality is this, we all have weaknesses. We all have them. Let's list a few. Can we, uh, even uh, those of you with me right now on Facebook Live, wherever you're at, let's just go old school Sunday school for a second. Everybody okay with that? Nod your head, all campuses. You all right with that? Let's go old school where you're going to help me, all right? Where, yeah, I'm working hard up here, okay? So you're going to help me with this. So what are your weaknesses? I'm just going to start uh, with one of mine, bread, all right? There you go. Let's just get honest here. 
I know a lot of y'all thought it was going to be something more spiritual, but bread is spiritual. I've said it a million times. Jesus, the bread of life, is the king of complex carbs. I'm in on it. But it's a weakness for me. What's your weakness? Someone throw a weakness out here. No, not your weakness. Throw out your neighbor's weakness. On your mark, set, go. What do we got? Sugar. Oh, whoa, we're really getting spirit. Uh, Yes, that's what bread turns into. I'm with you on that. Let's just combo those two. What else? Money. Someone said money because we ain't got none. Amen. That's right. What else? Fortnite. Fortnite. There's a kid confessing his sin in front of his parents. You know what? I can tell you how to get rid of that weakness right now. Matter of fact, it was about two in the morning the other day, and uh, one of my kids that play Fortnite, which is about all of them, but uh, one of them in my house, which I won't mention his name, just his initials, KJ, and uh, it, was, it was two in the morning, he's like, oh my gosh, what is going on? How did I die? And I was like, I can't take it anymore. I can't do it anymore. So I just pulled the plug on our, DS, or our, our cable modem, and it, it got rid of Fortnite in Jesus' name. I gave him renewed strength. Somebody else, come on, go on. Give me one. Uh, anxiety, okay. All right, and I, I, I'm going to put all three D's here, okay? You got depression, discouragement, doubt, all those in there. We, we could write these for a while. You know what your weakness is. Here, here's what I believe. I believe the Word of God is true in that if it's bread, if it's discipline, if it's doubt, if it's discouragement, if it's depression, you have a weakness in your life. If it's any of these things, I believe the Spirit of God And I believe the Word of God teaches he's not necessarily going to remove it, but he's going to help us. He's going to support you in that weakness. And and for some of you, it's relationships or other things, this, that, the other. Here's what I believe the greatest weakness of the church is. I'm going to take a little bit of liberty, but I believe you're going to see it clearly in the Scripture. Matter of fact, I believe for Christians, now I'm lumping Potentially those who don't know Christ into this cloud as well, into this sphere, this universe as well. Church, Christ followers, Christians, whatever you want to call us. I believe that the greatest weakness that is the contributor to many of these, especially doubt, depression, discouragement, which are, I believe are the enemy's uh, top three, triple threat. I believe this is the weakness that many of us battle, and it it dictates the others, and it's this, being offended. Offense. I, I, I know 28 years of ministry, I'm so grateful to God for, 12 years pastoring, here's what I know. There are people in the sound of my voice that are mature, grown adults that have made decisions and continue to make decisions based on an offense that happened multiple years ago. Then guess what it does? It gives credit to depression. It gives credit to doubt. It gives credit to discouragement. It gives credit to anxiety. It gives credit because I am discouraged. I need more bread. And then the next thing we know, we're offended. Guess what we do? We sign divorce papers. We get offended, the next thing you know, we say, you know what, I, I'm just not going to serve anybody. No one even called me. No one even said, you know, no one even said thank you. You know, I, I asked if I could sing, and then they don't even use me. I helped out in the kids and went up there and cleaned all Saturday. No one said you got offended. Guess what? You, you found yourself, because you were offended, living in the weakness now of selfishness. Because you were offended. And a matter of fact, many of you still have an arm's length to your spouse because 20 years ago you got offended by them. And, and I know this to be true. I mean, I know people that will join brand new church because they got offended at another church. And many of you right now listening to me are living your life, your decisions You won't even go to that store anymore and you're going to show them because you were offended. And what's crazy is you don't leave it there. You got to tell somebody, you got to dislike them on Facebook. You got to throw out a silent prayer request about it that just happens to be right at the exact time that that person's doing something. Oh, I don't know how they got that. Mm, I don't know how. Isn't it amazing? We're grown adults. We live our life. 
because we're offended by that person. It dictates our life. And for many of us, it's more than a weakness. You're living in sin, in bitterness. And you know what's crazy about being offended? If you stay there long enough, here's what happens. You go to level two, which is this, justify. You even have the justification thing memorized because you told so many people about it. You're like, well, it's different with me, man. I've had so many marriage mentoring opportunities where people start off, and here's how they start their conversation. This isn't going to sound very serious to you. I, I mean, I know it won't, because, but in the context of where I'm at, it sounds so small, but it's really not. Okay, what happened? I, I just don't understand why he just doesn't put his toothbrush where I ask. And, and if you don't laugh at that, it's because it's just so painfully true. Or if you do, it's like, help me, Jesus. <laughs> And there are people living their entire marriage based on a phrase, a situation, and you're offended and you're living based on offense. And matter of fact, you can't even do your job because you're so offended at your boss. I want to give you a revelatory truth from the mouth of Jesus Christ because we're following him, so we need to listen to him. Here's what he says in Luke 17 and verse number one. It is impossible... It is impossible. I'm going to say it again just for reiteration. It is impossible that no offenses should come. If you heard that at all of our campuses or Facebook Live, raise your hand. Put in the comment section. Hey, just put a hand in there. You heard It's going to happen. Well, well, I helped a couple years ago and and I never got a call from the student leader, and I gave that sum, and no one even said thank you, and I, I know it sounds so trivial. I'm telling you something. It, it's what's spilling in to many of our lives, these weaknesses, relationally, marriages, parents, siblings, coaches, employees, employers, and you're living offended. It's impossible, Jesus says, that no one no offenses should come, but woe to him through whom they do come. You will be offended. I read a stat the other day that 41% of all birds in New Zealand can't fly. I hope that helps somebody today. <laughs> You're writing that down, I'm sure. You, you know why? I mean, birds that fly here don't fly in New Zealand. You know why? There's no predators. And they never activated the wing muscles because they never have to fly away. There's no snakes, there's no predators, there's no, you know, things that are typical in North America. That's just how they maintain New Zealand, that island. So 41% of all birds can't fly. And you know what's amazing? You would never soar the way God wants you to unless you had an offense, unless you had a, a weakness, unless you had something coming after you. Your purpose is found in the moments that you have to pursue God because of pain. You're like, man, if I love God, nothing ever happened. If I just walk with Jesus, I wouldn't have this illness. I wouldn't have this situation. Listen, it's impossible that no offenses should come. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Offenses will come. And there's a passage of Scripture. There's a story, actually. I'm going to give you the context, the cliff note version of that I encourage you to read in your own personal worship. In 2 Samuel chapter 10 and verse number Three specifically is where we're going to be, but uh, here, here's the story. Hanun, son of Nahash, his king died. The Ammonite king died, which was his father. He died, and the neighboring uh, King David said, hey, I'm going to send condolences from our nation to his nation. So he says, I'm going to send two of my mightiest warriors to the funeral to just simply say we love you or we appreciate you however they're communicating condolence so they're doing the right thing right well here's what transpires in doing the right thing look at verse number three the Ammonites start creating this context of what's really transpiring here in 2 Samuel 10 3 it says again this is the Ammonite leaders just conjuring up something trying to convince Hanun this is what's happening. Do you think that David really honors your father? Because he sent comforters, these two 
awesome, mighty warriors. Has David not rather... Here, here it is. They're conjuring up a fence that's not even there. You know what's crazy is you do the same thing. Well, why didn't they click like? I wonder why they didn't click. They always click like. I wonder why they didn't text me. I wonder why they didn't call. They always call. Why didn't they call? And then guess what happens? You start conjuring up a fence that may have never happened. You know why? Because you're offended. Well, the Ammonites are offended. And he says, well, well has, has David not rather sent his servant to search the city, to spy it out, to measure the walls, to basically be able to know everything about us, and then come back and harm us? They're, all they're going to do is just so they can overthrow our nation is what's, what's transpiring here. Well, Hanun agrees. And they made up an offense. You, do you, I know this to be true. In your relationships, how many of your offenses are made up? How many of them? I mean, you're never going back to that restaurant because that waitress did X, Y, and Z, but you didn't know she just went through an ugly divorce or had a rebellious child or went through a miscarriage or had a difficult situation. And instead, you just became offended and you tell everybody why you hate that restaurant. And you live your life that way. You, you make your decisions based on offense. Some of you made it that way because of where you sleep in your home. You made your bed in offense. Not literally in offense would be uncomfortable, but it's still uncomfortable when you're making your bed in an offense as well. They conjured this whole deal up. Two mighty warriors show up. The guards take the two mighty warriors. You need to read this story. So powerful. Take the two mighty warriors, chain them, get ready to throw them out of the city, cut half their beards off, which, by the way, just real quick um, uh, understanding, if, if you are, are the higher rank you have in David's army, the longer your beard could be. In other words, I would never get past a private because I can't grow a beard. I mean, I'd be like <laughs> private for, you know, 80 years old. But uh, they, you grow your beard out. What they did is they denounced their rank. They humiliated them in public. And then they took their shorts, which happened to be kilts, which I'm not so sure we shouldn't go back to those. Now those man, you can get some workout done in a little skirt. I can tell you right now. So he took, they take their little skirts and they cut them off. And I won't read King James out of them, but it exposed their buttocks, as Forrest Gump would say. And they had to walk out of the city with their butts exposed. So their exact response was, they showed ours, we're going to kick theirs. So they call David up and they say, let's go. We're going to burn this place to the ground. They offended me. And I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm like, burn it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm just like, get in there and tear them up. I want to see the movie of it. Anybody else with me on that? Just go back, mighty warriors, and just light the place on fire. Okay, there's four people that are honest before God in this room right now. Everybody else is like, no, I'd pray with them and take them to WMU meetings. No, you wouldn't. Burn it. Burn it all. You know what David said? He said, go to Jericho. They're like, what? Jericho, in the original language, means this, sweet fragrance or the sweet place. And God's telling us the exact same thing right now. Are you offended? Get to the sweet place and get your mind right. Get to the sweet place. Matter of fact, he told him specifically, he said, don't even leave until your beard is fully grown back, which again would be decades for me. And there are some of you that are living in offense and you think you got a right and you don't. And all you have to do is this, go to the sweet place. That's point number one. Go to the sweet place. Lord Jesus, put me there. And, and if I was David, I'd just sent the 30 and, and just lit the whole place on fire. But he says, you will not be healthy. You will not be effective for me. Here's the crazy part of this story. These guys were in the center of God's almighty will and still offended someone. Hello. Well, if you did the right thing, it wouldn't offend anybody. I don't know where you came up with that lie, but it's a lie. It's a lie. 
You will offend people. There's things, and then, and then the offense is going to determine. I mean, I know people that have left churches over it. I know people that left marriages over it. I know people that stopped giving over it. I know people that justify anything because of offense, and they justify and justify. God says this, go to the sweet place. Get to Jericho. Get in my presence. Do everything you can to experience the sweetness of being filled and get your respect back, get your honor back, get your authority back, get to the place, get your skirt mended up, and then we'll talk about what we're going to do the next level. The scripture says this in Romans chapter 12, and I'll read it out of the King James, and it says this, Vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. You know, there's only two times, two things Jesus says or God says that are mine. You know what they are? The tithe and vengeance. Don't touch either one of them. And we've even justified how not to tithe, haven't we? <laughs> I just threw that in there. I just threw it in there. He's like, oh, man, you know what? I don't really believe in it because, you know, one time I saw that they blah, blah. You're not tithing to me. You're not tithing to church. You're tithing to Jesus Christ and the work of the kingdom. Amen. And here's the other thing. You don't have to put it in your hands. God can take care of the vengeance, I promise you. You determine whether or not you truly trust God if you'll let him take care of your offense. Why would you trust him with the offense of your sin that determines your eternity and not trust him with the offense of a small deal at a restaurant or a parking spot or the microwave door left open? Because we don't really trust him. Get to the sweet place. Worship, prayer, reading, evangelism. Get to the place where you can hear the Holy Spirit speak to you, work in you. You're like, oh man, it's, it's so big of a deal. Here's the deal about offense. It's just words. It's just words. Yes, they cut their beard. Yes, they cut their shorts. But ultimately, it's just words because they created something that is totally fabricated. In the center of God's will, they still offended someone, still had people talking bad about them, still had people trying to humiliate them. But here's the bottom line. You are bigger than that. Get to the sweet place. We'll take care of it. And by the way, the king did take care of it. Read that in your own quiet time. Oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Number two is this, if you're going to move past this offense, this weakness, so you can let the Holy Spirit yield, be yielded in your life, leading in your life, here's the second thing, let it go. Let it go. And most of you say, oh, I have. Have you? Do you eat there? Do you shop there? Have you called them? Do you love them? Have you intimately touched them as your spouse recently? Have you told your kids? Have you gone back to that boss? Have you gone? You're just like, I won't even walk by there. I'm not even going to see him. I'm not even going to go look at it. I know I shouldn't be this sarcastic about it. I know no other way to bring it across without just totally just <laughs> in the face. <laughs> just like, oh, man, you know, it's not really like that for me. It's a little different. Is it? it I, you can find out in five seconds. Make it right and let it go. And letting it go doesn't mean that you just let it go with them. It means you stop talking about it. You stop talking bad about them. You, you uh, find yourself in a place of humility yourself in the sweet place. Otherwise, you're going to be like Ezekiel says in 2515. Look at this. This is so powerful. God is trying to let you see this picture. Here's, here's what he's saying. The Philistines dealt vengefully, took vengeance with a spiteful heart to destroy because look at this. Look at this, because of the old hatred. There are some of you that are living with the old hatred and you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's old, why are you hanging on to it? You're offended. And you know what, I'll show them. Is, is it feeding everything else? Your offense? Let me give you the last two in closing. Stay in the sweet place if you want to release this. Let it go. And thirdly, forgive. I, I don't really know how to tell you this. Just do it. You know the steps. And let me just say this. If someone's offended you and they're not aware of it, don't go tell them they offended you. 
hey, by the way, you offended me. Let me tell you all about it. No, if, they don't, if they're not aware of it, don't. Just make it right with God, get to the sweet place, and move on. And be a big boy. I think the Spirit of God is enough to get you through it. You're like, oh, Shannon, it was adultery. How many times have you committed adultery? This week, looking at people you shouldn't be looking at. Don't give me, I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Jesus is going to help. The power of God wants to work through you. Don't live offended. Forgive. You know what unforgiveness is? I never have time to say what I really want to say here, but I'm going to say it because I have a friend that has uh, just recently had surgery, had a, a tumor on the back of his neck. And anytime he'd turn his neck a certain way, he, I mean, he would just out loud yell, like, ah, you know, just real, like, like something bit him. And I remember one time just kind of like slapping the top of his shoulder and it kind of came off his shoulder, or maybe I did it on purpose, I don't know. Came off his shoulder, hit me in the back of the neck. He just, just, like a dog, like, ow! Like that. That's exactly what happens when someone brings up the offense you're dealing with right now. You're like, oh, oh, you don't understand. They just touch that, or just bring it up offense, period, for many of us. Forgive. Forgive. Oh, it's too big. They got to ask me. I would forgive, but I know they'll do it again. How big is your God? How powerful is the Holy Spirit? I promise you, He's ready to help you. And lastly, is this know this your hurt will be your strength. That's what the Bible tells us. His power is made perfect in your weakness look at Proverbs chapter 24 this verse has just wrecked me this last week if you faint in the day of adversity and I know people man when the pressure comes on the pressure comes on the parenting pressure the leadership pressure the marriage pressure the finance pressure the job pressure the parking your car at Walmart pressure it says this it says if you faint in the day of adversity, when some comes on you, you're a whim. I did paraphrase a touch. You're a sissy. Your strength's so small. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't let someone get you out of the game. Offense is a chance to get in the sweet place. Being offended and making it right is a chance to see the power of the Holy Spirit working through you like you've never seen in your life. To grow your rank back, to get you positionally ready, to see humility fall, to see your positional leadership put back where God wants it to be. But you have got to let go. And then the power of the Holy Spirit working in and through you It'll change it. I read a story this week. I I don't even believe it's real. It is real. Matter of fact, it it was on several radio stations. And and this is what happened. A a 44-year-old man sued his parents because he was so ugly. It's a true story. Google it. And, And this is the basis of his lawsuit. If my parents, who are also so ugly, would have loved me enough They would have never created me because they knew they'd have ugly kids. And so I'm suing them. (laughs) You talk about living with offense. That is wild, is it not? And you know, you sit back and go, that's stupid. I bet if you shared yours and we put it on the screen, we'd start laughing too. You know why? Jesus already paid for it. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed. If you, by God's grace, this is as as radical as it can possibly be. If you, by God's grace, are going to deal with the offense, especially, most importantly, with God Almighty. And then secondly, if the person is aware of it, you're going to deal with it today. You're going to start living through the power of the Holy Spirit of God, allowing His power to be made perfect in this moment of weakness. And the other weaknesses you've fed due to offense, would you slip your hand up and say, I'm going to deal with it? by the power of the Holy Spirit in Jesus. And you can put your hands down, I knew it. I know it, It, in previous services, it was 50 plus percent. Just pray this prayer, Lord Jesus, let me yield myself to you wholeheartedly. Wash me, no fear. I'm ready to move forward and be set free in Jesus' name. 
And if you have prayed that or you agree with that at all campuses, put your hands together and let's celebrate the work of God changing our lives, our marriages, and the offenses in our community. It's going to liberate our world. And and would you do this as our host assists us with this next moment? Would you not give offended? Would you give in freedom and obedience to Jesus Christ in this moment? So into the work of the kingdom of God, so into Christ's work through the local church that he bled and died for. Bring your best. Don't justify. The tithe is mine, God says. Bring the tithe. If you're visiting with us, we don't want your money. We'd be so honored, though, if you take one of those connect cards, fill it out, drop it in the bucket, take one of those envelopes, put some information, drop it in the bucket so our team can say thank you. Even if you're with with us online, you can uh, shoot us a message at Brand New Church Facebook or with us on Facebook Live. I exhort you just so we can say, hey, say thank you for being with us. Also, I want to say to all of those of you that participated with us in our hero event and assisted us at all of our campuses, it was so fun seeing hundreds of people who would never walk through the doors of the church come, and 23 of those people pray to receive Jesus Christ yesterday at our hero event. So much fun. And I will say this, in our previous service, two were in our previous service at another one of our locations. Uh, And it was so fun to watch him walk in today. Let's pray and let's be obedient in this moment. Father, thank you as we bring our best to you. Be glorified in it. I pray, God, that we would not in any way begrudge, hold offense, try to justify, but we'd be obedient, sowing into your work, the local church you've called us to. Thank you for generosity. Thank you for the vision you've called us to. Thank you for the many who are going to be set free from the offenses they've held potentially for decades. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. And I don't always do this, but can we celebrate this moment of giving? Can we do that through applause? Thank you, God, for the privilege to give.